Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Patricia. Good evening, Luis. How are you today? Good evening. How are you? Good Very evening. Good. How, do, how do you feel, teacher? A little better. A little <laughs> better. Better than, than, than Friday. Friday was horrible. Friday after the class, oh, it was it was a very difficult day. No, yes, Friday, Friday. Thursday after the class that we had, I just went to sleep. <laughs> because uh. I, I felt very <laughs> sick, very, very sick. Supposedly I have chikungunya, supposedly, according to the doctor. So I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Thanks God is not COVID. But with the chikukunya, I mean all my all my muscles, all my uh sore. Yeah, they sore. It's horrible. Mm. Oh. So well, this is the last week for this module. <laughs> First, we are we are in section five. Yes. And uh, all of you had questions about the final exam, right? Yeah. I have a question. In the first, the first one, I now, can't. You told me, right, Patricia, that there is one part of the exam that you, you couldn't listen to, right? Yes, yes. You still cannot listen to that? Um, That's letter A, right? A. Voy a pasar al examen. Let me show you here. This is the exam, right? Final exam. Ah. Okay. I have a bad internet. <laughs> it's, it's the weather right now. It's right. It's raining here. It's, it's raining out of here. It's raining a lot also here where I am. It's raining crazy. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Adrian, Naira, Veronica. Hi, Miss. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Now, just uh, we, we're just checking right now really quick the exam. We are going to go and cover the topics for section five, of course, right? But we just want to check the listening. Uh, were you able to access the listening? For the ones that tried to make the exam before? No? No. Sometimes. Uh, I, uh -huh. Go ahead. I, I, I haven't uh, entered to the audio. Oh, you haven't? I haven't listened. No, I, ha I haven't listened in the audio. You haven't. Now, I was, I was checking yeah. here and it might be two, well, it might be different things. First, it might be the internet sometimes is not working, right? That could be one problem. Second problem could be the cookies, right? So it means that you need to clear your cookies on the on your computer. You just need to go to, uh, in this case, settings. Right? Once you go to settings, you click here where it says, um, privacy, seguridad. You click on borrar datos, right? And cookies. So you go ahead and do that. Just make sure that you don't uh, delete your passwords, right? Because then later it's difficult. If you click on the cookies, right? Then you are going to be able to, to open this type of uh, things. Also, if you're sometimes, if you're looking at your, at the exercises in your phone, it might take a while. Right, it might take a while. Thank you, Mayra, for letting us know. 
right? So let's try on Google Chrome or sometimes Mozilla, Mozilla Firefox, that works too. Those two. Because here, if you see, I think we can listen to it. Let's see, I'm gonna click here. I just click on the on the outside the box. Look, I just click here in the pop-up. Right? It takes me to another page. And then I'm able to listen from here. Right. You can listen. Units three to four quiz. That's what you should you should be able to do. But if you if still you cannot do that, we still have time because we have the whole week to fix this issue if some of you cannot access the listening, okay? Don't worry. But I just wanna make sure. Yes, Sylvia, what's your question? I don't know, but one, <clears throat> I have that problem and someone of the group record the audio and send out the group for everybody. Mm, we can do that. I can say, I can download it. I just downloaded it here. Look, I'm downloading it right now. <laughs> so I can send it to you. There's no problem, right? It's right here. And we can listen to this, right? We can listen to that. Let me, I mean, I can send it to you. Let me go ahead and have access. That's a good idea, Sylvia. One moment. There you are. Patricia, do you have, do you just receive the listening on WhatsApp? Okay. I just, I just received the, 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 the listening. Okay. Very yes. good. And I'm loud. Very good. Now, we have this part, the listening, we have the requests. Um, Cody, what were your what, what were your questions about requests? Hello, teacher. Hello. Uh, what did you say? I didn't hear you. Sorry, my, my throat is bad today. Uh, uh, what are the questions that you have about is section ah, two? The question, yes, in the last one. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to how to write the, the answer, but I ah I have done oh, it's done. It's done. Uh, yes, I finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, if it is finished, then uh, this is about the indirect request, I think. Yes. Isn't and, it? Yes. And it has the word borrow, right? So. The borrow. <clears throat> yes. The okay. verb I I was put putting the, the verb in another in another time. I I I put it on the past, but isn't it's not past. in the past. Mm -hmm. It's not in the past, yes. It's in the past continuous. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Cody. Right? You Thank solved you. that question by yourself. That's perfect. Now, yes. we have checked the correct phrase. Do we have any questions about this? No? Mm. We complete the story and the last part is to read the story. The story. So we have three stories here, right? And we answer based on that. Now, we're going to go right now to section five. We're gonna cover the topics, right? Keep on working on the exam, right? But right now we're gonna go with crossing cultures. Crossing cultures. Do you know what crossing cultures are? What's what's crossing mm -hmm. cultures? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. Any ideas crossing cultures? 
crossing. Crossing is to to cross to uh -huh. to one point. Uh, I don't know if if is when uh, we adopt another culture. Okay. I don't know. Closer is uh, como uh, acercarse. Close up. Okay. Okay. Cerrando. Uh, close, close. Is close or, or cross? Cross. 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 Cultures. Yes. Cross the cruzar. Yes. Oh. Okay. Now I'm going to show you right now, right? An example of crossing cultures, right? This is a video that I want to show you today. Right? For crossing cultures. Uh, it's a little bit long, right? But we need to see what crossing cultures is and then we can discuss it, right? Now, let's go ahead and see here. Tell me if you can see a video. Just crossing cultures. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, and teacher. Can you listen to this? Yes, teacher. Okay, let's listen and let's watch. from Pakistan, we have people from Nigeria, from Mali, from Italy, from France, and it's really nice to hear all the different languages. I was here maybe last summer, so it was good. It was fantastic to be here with uh, the student of England University. So that's why I came here again. It's for more fun and have a good time here. This is a place where people from all different backgrounds come together. And that's the potential as well. It's probably also potential for Europe. It's a project where it's not just, you know, students who participate, but migrants, tutors, inhabitants, people who live here, they come from everywhere. The municipality helps as well. So it's really a platform which is growing. So we've broken it into three kinds of protagonists. The first one is projects. The second one is making. And the third one is events. So they all look at Belmonte in very different ways. As an association, we give guidelines like the frames for the chairs, but then everything born, born like happens and everything kind of come out in a certain way because everyone put their own idea, their own skills, their own energy in it and otherwise would just not be so special. It's to create uh, something together uh, which allows um, for an encounter, uh, a reason to, to gather, um, get to know each other, get to know the context we are part of. By doing those, uh, those things we, we get to understand what are the real needs and what are the real opportunities created by the situation we are in. So we are in uh, depopulated villages with uh, encountering difficult economic time. Uh, there is a massive um, immigration coming to Europe um, and we think those can both be looked at as, uh, as problems or as solutions. We try to call, do something different, not like these things, with uh, the colors. But we don't have color, we just have five colors. So we saw, uh, we want to do something special for uh, this chair. It's the last one, that's why we want to do a special thing. Yeah. We, we are fighting for the design. 
We're trying to make a space that everyone can appreciate and everyone can grow inside. So whether it's us making the space, then it's you guys that decide, like, this is what we need because we live this experience. We've come to Italy or I have lived I in Italy my life. <laughs> and it's up to you guys to kind of decide then oh. what the future is. And you guys are living for yourselves, but you're also living for generations to come. So what we've got here is a really, is really rough mock-up uh, of the library doorway. Um, we're using just some found materials, not to be literal in what we're making here, but to give a sense of the sort of the, the older nature of the, the fabric of the building, uh, simulating sort of brick and plaster. And then what we're doing is we're projecting images of the actual real structure onto this, but then we can adapt this through projection mapping um, to simulate how this hatch door space might open but also we can simulate with sounds and images from different cultures a kind of more multicultural vision of how this space could potentially operate now and in the near future. Even with this, you can be able to set up your own uh, uh, workshop, you understand, because it's a very, this is a very vital aspect of it, because so many people at least love uh, those kind of uh, things that we are i have progetti dei ragazzi inglesi che, che sono dietro di me e che sono quasi tutti di, di notevole interesse su una problematica molto importante in questo periodo che è appunto l'accoglimento e il dare una ragione di vita agli extracomunitari che arrivano eh, non solo dall'Africa come ho visto ma anche dalla, da, da paesi del mondo. L'incontro delle culture è un incontro ricchissimo di scambi e noi abbiamo da imparare quanto, almeno quanto abbiamo da insegnare. And what's really nice, we think this is a really successful project, it brings together lots of different stakeholders um, in a way where everybody can contribute. We are working. Okay, okay. <clears throat> now, right, we just watched the video about cross cultures, right, the crossing cultures. What's for you now crossing cultures? What are we going to talk about in this unit, section five? Yes, buddy? Me? Yes. You turn on your microphone. Tell me. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I, I can say something. Okay, what is okay? The crossing culture is like in Spanish, como cruce de cultura, no? Okay. And there are different. The video said that there are different backgrounds, and everyone have ideas. Everyone express their uh, real needs. And in this project is the there are no there is a multicultural visions. There are multicultural visions in this uh, uh, for the integration for the migrants. I I I think that they say, they say this that. is like a migrant, no? Yes, this is for an immigration project, right? That they are are completing there for refugees. That's right. Thank you for it. Yes. yes. This is just as this project is is I brought I brought this project up to you as an example of what crossing cultures is, right? You can make cross you make uh you can have cross cultures in any other places. For example, uh like a few months back I used to teach students from different places here in, in Central America. Even though we are from Central America, very close to each other. Very close to each other. Then the people from Honduras, from Costa Rica, from Mexico, they have different cultures. Uh, when, when we can, can see the interchange in the universities. In the universities too, exactly. But when we have a, a little bit of, well, different cultures 
from different places, but from inside the country, right? It's more noticeable, like in the video. You see video from people from Italy speaking Italian, some people, French people talk, uh, speaking in English, but with a French accent. British right? people. Right, British people, people from uh, South Africa, right? South people African. from Africa, right? From different places, right? Gracina, what's cross cultures for you? Um, for me, I, I understand that uh, when you interchange uh, or, or, or culture with other culture in another country or in this country, but um, with other people or other countries. And, and you shared your uh, ideas and your uh, things, uh, your culture, and you know um, the other the other um, people about of uh, your country. I. I think that is, is that. You're totally right. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> Archimedes? Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, I think that the, it's a, the crossings means some, uh, something like a, a, a Congress, you know, when you invite some people to your country to, uh, explain some techniques from, for example, and medicine or, for example, um, engineering, uh, and talk about uh, different things that that they uh, uh, do in 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 her job, you know, for example, uh, uh, when you take, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, you, they talk about the new uh, specimen, uh -huh. or uh, how do you say species? Yes. Species? Yeah. Uh, a, a, a species, species, a, a species uh -huh, that they found in her uh, country, and they try to to uh, I don't know to. For example, we have here we have right now uh, geckos, you know, and that kind of animal. They come from. Uh, somebody say, says that is from. China, I don't know, uh, and they be eating, they eating our our fauna. Okay, yeah, our fauna, yes, those uh -huh, are our animals. Fauna. Uh huh. That we we that we we have we have uh, and uh, everybody uh, transmit his uh, experience about some species or. Uh, it depends what the, the Congress talking about. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, uh, Archimedes. So that's what we're going to do with this topic, right? We're going to learn about different cultures around the world, right? We just saw right now a project, right? That's a project that uh, was created in a specific place. But now we're gonna watch a video. It's a little bit old, right? but it tells us a little bit more about different cultures, right? And their experience. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and place it for you here. What we're going to do is after this, uh, after the video, we're going to try to share if you have had any experiences, any cross-cultural experiences before, right? Now, let me go ahead and show it to you here. Just give me a moment. Like I cannot find Zoom. 
Where is Sol? What is Sol? Where is Sol? Okay, here we are. Can you see what it says? Travel work? Yes. There we are. So we're going to go ahead and watch this video. Pay attention, take notes. We're going to watch it only once and then we discuss. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camila and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four, and I've lived here ever since. Two years ago, I went to Sweden, and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different, because here in Brazil, we kiss on the cheek, and they shake hands. So I went to kiss, like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that, but it's strange. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat, 
So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. Okay, so how many cross-cultural experiences did we see? They will watch? Three. Three, no. three, yes. three, three different, different cultures. Three different experiences, three different cultures. Okay, very good. Now, Azucena, tell me your own words about the first one. <clears throat> well, <laughs> I'm glad to see you again, teacher. Thank you so much. <laughs> glad to see you too. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, they uh, were talking about uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. And I remember that the woman said that when she arrived to this country, uh, the, the way the people um, interact were different because she was accustomed to, she, she used to, to, to give to other people uh, a kiss from the chick mm -hmm. and, and the, the other person think that she was invading uh, their space. That it's is a right. different way to, com to communicate. Okay, perfect. Okay, so it was totally different, right? From the way they, they uh, say hi, say hello, right? Yes. What was the country she traveled to? I mean, she is from Brazil. She was from Brazil, right? And she traveled to another country. To which country did she travel to? Mm. Switzerland, I think. Switzerland, okay. Yes. Very it's, good. A very different, very, very different country. I mean, it's yeah. Europe, right? Okay, very well. Thank you, Azucena. Patricia, can you tell us about the second? Mm -hmm. Second experience? Okay. okay, Chair. In the second experience, uh, the interview um, uh, was in Peru, Lima, Peru, in the Plaza de Armas. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, they uh, they talk about uh, the different uh, uh, way to the public transportation, okay. and uh, because the um, is different. Uh, the the guy is uh, was from I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> ah, I, I don't know what nationality the, the, the gay interview, but uh, no. the public transport, <laughs> transportation is, was uh, the, the northern. The northern. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, right. He was surprised that the public transportation right, was private and everyone wanted to, to, to have them on, on their bus right <laughs> yes okay very yeah. good very good now let's see here mr no no adrian is gone uh rosa luz the third one please Rosa Luz? Rosa. No, not here. Uh, let's see, Sylvia, the third experience. Um, the men, it was to Tepoztlan, Mexico. Uh -huh. and then he lives in United States, the United States. The name is Delfino Vasquez. Mm -hmm. And the problem for him was the meal because it's different. People in 
I, I understand that people in the United States eat sandwiches. <laughs> yes. And, and for him, the meal is, is strong, is with rice, with beans, with more strong, I think. It's actually stronger. Very good. That's right. Very good. I mean, a Mexican meal is like a Salvadoran meal, right? Yes. We, we eat a lot during lunch. If we have time, we eat a lot. If not, we just eat a maruchan and then we can we keep on working. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now, <clears throat> now we have this uh, readings, right? This cross cultural experiences. They talk about cultural shock, right? Based on the video, what do you think cultural shock is? Because I need you to understand those, you know, those. Uh, terminologies. Uh -huh. Based on the based on the video, what do you think cultural shock is? Cultural shock is when there is a a same thing in the two countries, but the means are different. It's different. The means about the same thing. The meaning is different. The meaning, yes. Like the the when the interview on Brazil, uh -huh. the greetings are different when you say hello to to another people or another person. Okay. It's to kids in, in in your cheers, cheers, or what is that? What is that part of the body? <laughs> How do you say it? Cheers. Chicks. Chick. Chest, right? Chick. 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 Chest. Ah, oh, chest is that. <laughs> For me, this is a cultural shock, I think. Imagine if you're dying in the United States, I'm going to go to the Brown star chest. <laughs> Hello. Oh my okay. God. <laughs> so very good, guys. Thank you so much. We're gonna see culture shock right now. I know that you're not used to uh, long readings, but I would like you to read a little bit more, right? And this is a reading that we're going to see right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you, okay? And you're going to listen to it as well. Just give me a moment. I'm downloading this. And we're going to, because we're going to see more vocabulary. Every time that you read more, right, you get more vocabulary. That's for sure, right? There's no other way. I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. And I will share the reading with you, okay? No worries. This is an intermediate reading, right? That you're going to listen to. One second. There we are. One moment. I'm going to send to you both the reading and the audio, but we're going to play it here. Okay. I will send you the, the, the article so you can look at it while you listen to it. One moment. Okay, aquí vamos. Okay, you got the reading passage there. It's culture shock. Okay. 
and you got the audio over there if you want to listen to it after the class, right? To practice your pronunciation, you can do so. Now, I'm gonna show it to you here, right? The one that I'm gonna show you here on, the, on my computer, right? It's the same, it's the same lady, right? That you receive. It's culture shock. This is from a book, right? This is not something invented. We're going to listen the, uh, to this article, right? By Bob Winston from the Boston Globe. So it's an article, right? Articles tend to be more, a little bit scientific and with proof, right? So they have more difficult words. So let's listen to it. Right in, let's practice. Tell me if you can listen to this. Chapter six, Culture Shock by Bob Weinstein from the Boston Globe. Did you listen to that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. Let's start reading together and then we'll talk about the article. Saying Tamara Blackmore experienced culture shock when she arrived here last September is an understatement. It was more like culture trauma for this adventurous student who left Melbourne's Monash University to spend her junior year at Boston College, BC. Blackmore, 20, was joined at BC by 50 other exchange students from around the world. Like the thousands of exchange students who enroll in American colleges each year, Blackmore discovered firsthand there is a sea of difference between reading about and experiencing America firsthand. She felt the difference as soon as she stepped off the plane. As soon as she landed in Boston, Blackmore could feel the tension in the air. She was about to taste a lifestyle far more hectic than the one she left. Driving in Boston is crazy, says Blackmore. It took me a while to get used to the roads and the driving style here. I was always afraid someone was going to hit me. It was particularly tricky since the steering wheel was on the wrong side of the car. In Australia, it's on the right side. Beyond the cars and traffic jams, Blackmore said it took a while to get used to so many people in one place, all of whom seemed like they were moving at warp speed. There are only 18 million people in Australia spread out over an entire country, she says, compared to more than 6 million people in the state of Massachusetts alone. We don't have the kind of congestion you have in Boston. There is a whole different perception of space. The pressing problem for Blackmore was making a quick adjustment to the American lifestyle that felt like it was run by a stopwatch. For this easy-going Australian, Americans seem like perpetual motion machines. Americans are very time-oriented, Blackmore says. Everything is done according to a schedule. They're always busy, which made me feel guilty about wanting to just sit around and occasionally watch television. Australians, on the other hand, value their leisure time. The pace there is a lot slower because we don't feel the need to always be busy. It's not that Australians are lazy, it's just that they have a different concept of how time should be spent. Back home, I used to spend a lot more time just talking to my friends. It didn't take long for Blackmore to adjust to American rhythms. I felt the pressure to work harder and do more because everyone was running around doing so much, she says. When BC students weren't huddled over books, Blackmore found it odd that they were compulsively jogging, running, biking or doing aerobics in order to be thin. Compared to home, the girls here are very skinny, she says. Before I got here, I heard a lot of stories about the pressure to be thin and that many young American women have eating disorders. I'll go out with a friend and just tuck into a good meal and have a good time, whereas an American girl would just pick at her food. But it's BC's laid-back and friendly learning environment that sets it apart from her Melbourne college experience. Generally speaking, learning facilities are a lot better in Boston, she says. In Australia, students and teachers have little contact outside the classroom. It's a formal and depersonalised relationship. College is a place you go for a few hours every day and then go home. Your social life and school life are separate. It's just the opposite at BC, according to Blackmore. 
BC students and faculty are like one big happy family, she says. There is a real sense of team spirit. It's like we're all in this together. Going to school here is a lifestyle, whereas at home, we're just a number. We attend school to get a degree so we can graduate, get a job, and get on with our lives. Another pleasant shocker was the close and open relationships American students enjoy with their teachers. It's a sharp contrast to Australia, where college students keep a discreet but respectful distance from their teachers. I was surprised when I learned students go out to dinner with their lecturers, she says. We just don't do that back home. Professors deal with hundreds of students and you're lucky if they remember your name. When Blackmore returns to Australia at the end of the school year, she'll have plenty of memories, most of them good ones. BC, like most American colleges, has gone out of its way to create a memorable experience for Blackmore and its other exchange students. Okay, so we finished there with our reading, right, about these Australian girl who moved to the US, right? To which, according to the reading, to which state did she move? I mean, she moved to the United States, but to which state? Uh-huh. Boston. Boston, very good. She moved, she moved to Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts. Very good, Corey. Excellent. Now, did you listen to the different uh, culture shocks that she had, different experiences? Right? Yeah, but. <laughs> okay. Now, what was the most like uh, appealing for you? Like the one that you say, oh, I remember this one. Let's see, Adriana Pais. Which one do you remember? Uh huh. Adriana. No, no tengo Adriana. Okay, tampoco Rosa. Eh, let's see, Elizabeth. Miss Guti. What is one experience that you remember from the from the reading? She say the traffic. Okay. Uh, okay. And the no sé cómo se dice el ritmo de vida. Lifestyle. Lifestyle is very hard and. Um, uh -huh. um, uh, the people, is, well, no, the the teachers is very um, and very um, well. The class and the classmate in the. Uh, the teachers, uh, this is the, um, it's very, um, no sé cómo se dice, que se sintió recibida. Welcome. Uh -huh, welcome. And just that. <laughs> just that. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Somebody wants to add something else? About uh, well, I understand the, the experience uh, in the U.S. when well, the American student, mm -hmm. maybe they they don't respect the, the teacher, but in Germany, um, the respect between they is very hard. In Australia, in Australia. Ah, in Australia. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> in Australia. In Australia. Okay. In Germany too. <laughs> but according to the reading, he's in Australia. Okay, very good, Patricia. And yes, they in America they do respect their teachers. The only thing is that they get along more with their teachers. Like teachers are their friends. Right? They can, well, not everyone, right? But 
they can be your friends. If the teacher likes you and you like the teacher back, then they can be friends, right? They can go out, right? Like in San Salvador, right? Many universities in San Salvador, the teachers, they go out with the students. First, first of all, because they are adults, right? They are not teenagers. They are adults at the universities. So it's pretty much like a similar culture, right? Very similar culture. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing. Look at this. These are the topics that she's that she talks about, right? She talks about well, some of them: driving and traffic, the pace of life, free time activities, university culture. We have in the first one here, right? Uh, Archimedes, can you read in the United States? And Gracina, can you read in Australia? Okay, in the United States, there are uh, they, there are lots of traffic things. The steering wheel is on the left side of the car. Okay, thank you. In Australia, there aren't a lot of traffic jams. The steering wheel is on the right side of the car. Of the cars, very good. The traffic jams, it's difficult. Like, for example, here in, in my city, right? There, there are a lot of traffic jams, just sometimes at noon, right? In, in some places, right? But in San in Salvador, the morning. <laughs> yeah, in the morning, in my cities in the morning. But in San Salvador, wow, San Salvador is always packed. Right, it's like crazy. I think so. Okay, <laughs> now let's see what she what she said about that. Let's go back to let's go back to the reading and put the information based in the United States here and Australia on the other side. Right, let's do it. I said Susanna is already completing the table in her mind. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing, Azucena? You're watching the novela? No, it's raining right now, and so I couldn't listen. <laughs> we are we are uh, completing this table based on the reading. We have two columns: the topics, what happens in the United States, and what happens also in Australia. Okay. Okay. Can you listen? Can you listen to me? Perfectly. Okay. <laughs> Um, I remember uh, in the United States, the pace of life, um, as if they uh, live so fast, the, the, the time um, pass so fast. Okay, um, Americans live very fast. And okay. they, and they have and a schedule for all the activities that they have to do all day. And most of the time, and they don't have enough free time. And okay, that will be for the next one. That will be for the next one. We're in the pace of life, okay? Ah, yes, yes, it's the next one, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> What about in Australia? How is the pace of life in Australia? In, it... in, in Australia, um, they, they try to, to, to have free time. Okay, they have to, they have, they try to have. They try to have free, free time, time to do something that they are in, interested too. Interested in. 
Okay, very good, very good. Free time, okay. university culture. Let's see who else wants to share. We only have a few minutes left, but Adrian, do you have any ideas for free time activities? In the United States, what are the free time activities? Okay, um, in United States, uh, they have uh, no more time for person, uh, more job, and the rhyme life is very fast. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Work. Okay, Mr. Good, good, good. What do they do in their free time? What activities do they do in their free time? Who remembers? For, uh, for example, uh, yoga. Yoga, uh huh. Um, running at the park. Yoga, running, exactly. She mentioned that. Uh, skateboarding, basketball. Okay, it's sports, right? It's sports. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, so we're gonna put it here. And what about Australians? What do they do? In Australia, it's different in life. Uh, for the people, more time for for free time. Uh, for example, in the practice yoga, and um, uh -huh. at the meeting and the family, for example, picnic. And, okay. And they uh, exit the uh, going to eating for friends. Okay. And the family. They hang out with friends. Excellent. They hang out with friends. Very good, Adrian. Very good. What about university culture? Who can tell me about university culture? Thank you, Adrian. Okay. Okay, you have two minutes. Patricia, I see you wanna talk. I see you from here. <laughs> University. University. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between universities in the US and universities in Australia? I remember American students they don't have uh, respect to to the the teachers. They respect the teachers, I swear. Mm -hmm. But they are just friends with the teachers. Yes, they <laughs> they uh, used to make outdoors friends. Uh -huh, make and, friends and go out with their the students. And I think it's, it's not a problem. There's not a problem, exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. It's like, her. yes, then. She says that they are like a big happy family. Uh -huh. they, are, they are like a big happy family, exactly. In Australia, says that, uh, they look with respect to the teachers, but uh, maintains uh, a distance with with the teachers and the partners. Exactly. Okay. That's they, my story. They respect their teachers and maintain distance. That's right. Very good, Sylvia. Very, very good. Now, we have to, we have to, this uh, topic for today about cross culture, make us think about the differences. It's a very respectful distance from their teachers. Exactly, Veronica. Very respectful distance. Very respectful distance. Very well. 
Okay. So these are just some ideas, right? We have other topics that she mentioned for cross-culture, right? She didn't mention only that, she mentioned more, right? But that's what we're going to discuss. So today was about talking, was about listening, was about reading. It's always good to read, right? Tomorrow we're gonna see that, right? Now phrase. Teacher. Yes, what's up? The verb maintain. Mind. It's a verb. Yes. It's like keep. Maintain. Yeah. Maintain. Okay. Yes. Thank you. It's correct. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's <laughs> too low for any people. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is correct. I think it's, it's, it's uh, more correct to say keep the distance. It's just for that, not for the <laughs> for the <laughs> minimum of maintain. <laughs> no, it's the same. It's the same, no worries. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Don't worry. You're welcome, Tori. Right. So we got there, right? Our class for today, right? A lot of speaking, a lot of listening. Right. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Be ready for now phrases. Try to watch the video. We're gonna watch it here, but Try to bring your examples, right? And I will see you guys tomorrow. Sleep well with this rain. Well, if you don't have a maybe in the night, right? So okay. <laughs> have Thank a you, beautiful teacher. night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye everyone. Bye.